first time I think I've seen a fictional story combined with the documentary around that. It was really a neat experience to see them both. Um, what was it like to make the fictional piece and then a documentary? What's the difference for you as a filmmaker working on fiction and working on documentary? So um, when I made the fiction piece, I was not thinking of making a documentary about them. I just thought I could get the fiction piece done. I had Jim come and do some shooting. I figured I'd cut three to four minutes of the making of and throw it on the DVD. And when we were, had a screening with Gordon Quinn uh, with the fiction piece, he said, yeah, yeah, but I want to know why you made this film. And so that's when David and I sort of sat down and started pulling it all together and I realized I had all of this material that I'd had for years. So making a fiction piece is almost easier because you can redo it over and over and over again. Making a documentary you're kind of stuck with what you have and you have to really figure out how to create a narrative structure and create a story and make it work. So I almost think it's harder and, and being a documentary filmmaker made it easier for me somewhat to make a fiction piece I think. Yeah, Rachel. Well, my son's in the audience, and he did not take dance lessons. He got um, sucked up by football. But anyway, my daughter took like two dance lessons and wouldn't have any of it. And that was fine. That was fine with me, you know. So, yeah. Sure. This is my sister, Nikki. <laughs> Yeah, let's start with Craig, the composer. Actually, I f asked Maria why you weren't in the picture to begin with. That's right, he did. You're in this picture because of Craig. <laughs> so when I was watching it, I thought, wow, it'd be really cool to get some of the other perspectives. And they looked at me, David and Maria, and thought, well, I don't know. Can we go back? Can we do this? little back and forth conversation and then this is the first that I saw so it was really great to see you guys up there. So that, that really helped to have the background to the story and for me what was really cool about this was having been a music brat my whole life but peripherally been around dance either as a kid accompanying classes or having friends that were in that world in one form or another it was really nice to see it through Maria's eyes hear her story and then get to be a part of telling the story with music because I had to match some of what pre-existed with Beethoven's overture and it was really tricky and some of the source music too and then to weave in and out of all those periods and to help tell the story which is really fun and it was really an honor to work with these really talented people so for me it was just a really lovely experience and a, a nice chance to have a little bit of a taste of your family. So, great job, by the way. Dean, you're next. My impressions of making the, the project? Yeah, what was it like to work on it? Well, it was great to bring back a piece of the past because we did authentic combinations that we did in class as we grew up. It was a lot of fun and it was an honor also, again, to work on this. Lee. Um, the Lee, when I met her, she said, you need to cut the first six pages. <laughs> and I did. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, great. You have X amount of dollars and this many dancers. And, and it's and a period piece. And there's stunts. <laughs> oh, and um, three little girls in two different periods in their life. And it's about your life. And oh, my God. <laughs> no, it was really fun. I think for me, I just really like um, the process of filmmaking. And it's really rare when you get to do a project like this and everything comes together nicely. <clears throat> and I, it was just a really fun process and I enjoyed it a great deal. And that's not always as smooth as, as this one went. Maria was really great about respecting, you know, the crew and the cast and, and you know, not being a big baby about one more shot, one more shot. So it was just a great experience. <laughs> Ten more shots. Ten more shots. Yeah. Um, well, this was a blast to work on, just work on. Um, and welcome reprieve from the midlife crisis. And um, I think for me the seminal moment of this project was right at the beginning when um, I realized just how deep 
the obsession with making this film ran in you and how many years back it ran and that and, and you know sort of took in the suggestion from Gordon that we do a film about the film and from the beginning for me that was the much richer part of the project and just it seemed like something worth mining um, you know that this this woman had been obsessing for 35 years about making this film and was finally doing it and had this huge backlog of documentary material to and, and had tried it from all these different angles <clears throat> so <clears throat> I'd worked with Maria on several films before um, but this one um, and she's always a pleasure to work with but this one being about Maria and and I think I really saw for the first time um, her just how rich her sense of humor is and, and was hopefully able to bring that out in the film uh, so it was this sort of trying to create this seamless continuity between documentary life and, uh, and the narrative life, which sprung from her real life. Before Jim Morissette talks, because he's the master of undersell, I want to just make a comment about how extraordinary it was that he did what he did. I said, come shoot the making of. That's all I said to him. And his incredible eye as a cinematographer and his also his skill as a filmmaker knowing that he had to shoot what was happening in various ways in various visual tropes I guess is the word I'm using so that I could get in and out of it if I wanted to use it it really speaks to his talent so there you go now yeah now you can talk well, I wanted to please you too Maria oh, so. there you go. <laughs> it, it was a wonderful time for me because it's the first documentary I've ever shot in only six days <laughs> That's um, right. And with no direction, I could shoot whatever I wanted to. But there were several moments in that hot dance studio where I was trying to capture that intense moment where everything was trying to come together with the dancing, the crew, the camera dolly, and everything else. And I realized that I had to know how to dance as well in order not to trip over all the lighting cables getting in the way of the sound boom. Um, and I realized I could do it, which was kind of a revelation to me. Mm -hmm.